welcome to the second video in my series on the programming of art, creating generative artwork in R, and because this is part of my robust tools class, this is also an excuse to teach a bunch of new R concepts uh, that you may wish to use later on in your life. The kind of nominal goal of this uh, series is to create these kinds of pictures uh, in a pseudo random kind of way. And each of these pictures, so I'm calling these kind of uh, pictures a, a scrawl. I don't know why, but that seems like a good enough name. You can see that what they're made up of is a series of lines. So there's a whole set of lines. I think there's about 500 in this one. And uh, they are, or paths as I'm going to call them. And each path is made up of a bunch of steps, and they're very small steps, so it looks like a nice smooth curve. So what we're going to try and do is use our random number generators to create these paths uh, as we go. So to do that, I am accidentally on purpose teaching a bunch of new programming concepts. So last time we talked about uh, lists, tibbles, dollar operators, sort of random number generators. And now we're going to talk a bit about flow control. Uh, so I'm going to talk about loops and conditionals. So loops like while, conditionals like if, and we'll see how those are extremely useful programming constructs. So to do all of this, um, I'm working inside an RStudio project. Uh, it's specifically, it's this RStudio Cloud project, uh, but I just happen to have it open over here and you can see that I'm coding as we go. Okay, so because I've decided um, now that these random number generators, numbers that I was generating in the last uh, video are all going to be um, used to specify coordinates of a point, and those points are going to, as I ch as I evolve it over time, are going to trace out paths. Let's give this a more informative name. So I can change nRand to be something more helpful like nPaths. That way I know what the parameter corresponds to. As a general rule, give your variables, give your code informative names. So I could manually retype it three times, but you can see that, you know, that, that would be tedious and I might make a typo. So a better way of doing this would probably be to kind of go do a find and replace. So nRand, and uh, that was just control F, and then I'll just tab over here, and then I will replace it with nPaths. And then we'll just go, uh, so I could replace, I'll do it one at a time rather than just all. So I replace it there, I replace there, I replace there, and there are no more occurrences. So by doing it that way, I've pretty much guaranteed that, hey, I've captured them and I haven't introduced any new typos. Awesome. Okay, so that's a kind of trivial change. Um, one thing I'm going to do next is recognize that because these coordinates that I've generated here are um, going to be what well, they're they're x y values, but each x and y value is associated with a a different um, a, a different path, right? So um, when I typed, if I just go so and we'll go state. Oops. Okay. If I just um, go state here, um, each of these rows is the first point in a path. So what I would need to do, um, and we might as well use this as an excuse to do a bit of dplyr revision, is mutate our state variable and add some uh, handy little ID uh, identifiers. So first we'll go state, and we'll just take the exit get, so we're taking the existing state, and that's control shift M to get my uh, pipe operator. So we're going to pipe state to mutate. And then what I'm going to do is say that the path ID, so that is a, an identifier that specifies which of those lines it belongs to, is just going to go from 1 to, and as a revision exercise, I'm hoping you're remembering the thing I would do is go art par, which is the list. Um, of my parameters, and if I go dollar, and it'll be n paths, right? So now um, that should be everything I need. Yep. Uh, just give you a little bit more room there to see the full command. So we're taking state, we're piping it to mutate, we're creating a new variable inside our data frame, and when I go save, um, 
and source. Uh, if we have a look at state now, you can see that we've just got a, a, an ID. So this is specifying that, okay, the first row is um, an element of the, the first um, uh, the first path. This is the an element of the second path and so on. So each of these is going to be a, one of those separate lines. Cool, that's what we want. We should also, because these paths are going to unfold over a series of steps, we should have an identifier that corresponds to that too. So I'm going to kind of go, uh, since it's a series of steps, we'll call it step ID. Uh, so there's an identifier for that too, and it's just going to be equal to one. So it'll be one for every single element in the table. Let's just check that, source it, and go back up here and go clear screen and go state. And okay, so the we what we now have is the complete state of um, or almost complete state of the picture at time or step zero and then we're just going to go through a sequence of steps over and over and over again making those lines longer um, at the moment we can't see anything so it's really boring um, so but it'll start getting interesting hopefully as we go through this okay so the thing we're going to want to do uh, next is uh, make a decision about how long those paths should be. How many steps should we uh, have this run for? So let's just add another parameter to our, um, our list and we have n steps. And I'm just going to say that that's equal to 80 steps for no apparent reason. Okay, so now that we've got that, what I want to do is have something that kind of over and over again modifies this state according to some rules and saves the output as I go along. So first off, when I'm thinking about how I'm going to do this is thinking how am I going to, uh, where am I going to save it? So let's say that our art itself is going to have a data structure. So I'll just call it art dat. And art dat is initially going to be the same thing as the state. Okay. Um, why is it complaining at me? Oh, I think I've just pressed the wrong button. And again, in good coding practice, um, keep uh, track of the uh, series of states. Okay, so we have some comments up there. Um, and up here we should add a comment that says uh, include the uh, path ID and step ID uh, uh, in the state because that is all relevant to where you are in the path and what path each point belongs to so you need to have variables that correspond to each of those things okay so we've now got essentially all of our little, we've set up the things for our canvas, right? So if I just go like this, right, I'll just source it again. There's nothing super interesting here, um, not history, if we go environment. Let's just have a look at this artdat command, uh, command uh, data structure. So our artdat is same as state, it's a tibble. Um, what I'm going to do, just quickly, so to convince you that we've got something, is uh, do a bit of ggplot revision. So we'll just go ggplot uh, data equals art dat mapping equals aesthetics and it's going to be boring one x equals x and y equals y and just for now um, I'm going to add a geom point this is going to be an extremely boring picture, but um, if we go like this, voila, what you can see is this is the starting state for our artwork. It's just some random numbers distributed over um, between 0 and 2 on the y-axis, 0 and 2 in the x-axis. So that's currently all we have in our artwork. Okay, so 
how are we going to add to that? The thing that we need to do is write a loop. So let's go, uh, I'm going to create a new section, that's Control shift r to bring up the insert section box. These are just comments that separate things out and make it nice and pretty. And I will say that what we're going to do is uh, create the art in a loop. So here's what we want to do. The logic of it is going to be something like this. I'll create a variable and I'm just going to be really boring and call it stop painting. And I'm going to say stop painting is false. So I don't want to stop painting. I want to keep painting. Okay. So we've got that. This is a logical variable, so it can only take on values of true and false. All caps is how you would do it. So we're not stopping painting, we're going to keep going. To write a loop, what I need to do is something like this, and I'll give you a little of detail about what it means in just a second. If I go while stop painting is equal to double equals to test. We've seen that before. False. And do some painting. <laughs> this kind of data structure here is, well, at the moment, what we've got is something that would be an infinite loop. So to get a sense of what a loop is doing, it's uh, taking the code that you include inside these curly braces and it's just it's going to run it all from top to bottom just like it normally would then when it gets to the bottom it goes back up to the top again it then checks this condition here and says is stop painting still equal to false if it is it does it again and then it comes back goes back to the beginning and it will keep going forever until stop painting equals true. So we'd better do something uh, here. So let's just for now, we will have something that says, um, let's do a little, just some not super exciting uh, things. Let's do a little mutate uh, in here. So I'm going to go state equals, we'll take the existing state and we'll go just mutate it inside a loop. We're going to mutate it? Yeah, we'll mutate it, but actually what I'm going to do is overwrite existing variables. Okay, mutate. Um, and I think what I'll just do is uh, x equals x plus, um, I don't know, 0.1, y equals y, why? We'll leave Y unchanged. In fact, let's just do that. Okay. So we're going to keep doing this, um, and at each time point, I want to say something like, "I better keep track of um, whether I want to stop painting." So let's say uh, I will stop painting after some number of steps. So initially, we are on step. One, so step ID equals one. All right. So maybe what I should do is every single time I will go step ID equals step ID plus one. So now every single time we get through this code, what we're going to do, what it's going to do, is it'll take the existing state that tibble that we've got, it'll add something to the x value, it will increment the step by one, and then it'll go up to the stop top, and it'll keep doing this forever. We still haven't given it any rule that says um, stop now. So if we go, the simple rule would, be, a simple thing to make it stop would be something like this. I'm going to have an uh, if statement. If the um, if state if we grab the last this is a function in dplyr last state um, step id is 
greater than or equal to, what did we have it before? Art par dollar n steps. Again, open up some squiggly braces and then we'll go stop painting equals true. Okay, so the what this is doing is it's grabbing from the cut from it's just grabbing the it's looking at the state tibble it's grabbing the step ID column and it's just grabbing the last value from that column if that value is equal to uh, step ID Oh, sorry, is it, if that value of step ID is greater than or equal to the number of steps that we said we would do, then, so if this thing here is true, then what we do is go stop painting. We're just going to set that to true. So now, what our loop is going to do is it's starting here, saying currently we don't stop painting. We're going around, we mutate it, we increment our step counter, we check to see if we've done our steps for the for the loop. If we have, we stop. If we haven't, we continue. So you continue this until you get the correct number of steps. Okay, so this will now stop. All right, so let's check that. We go Control uh, Shift S to source this. And it's not the most exciting thing again in the world, but let's have a look. Um, state is 500 by 4. So it's still a 500 uh, um, uh, 500 rows. So there's one for each of the paths. And the first path, the one that if you recall, if you can remember back that far, started at 0 0.370. Um, we've just been incrementing the x coordinate bit by bit by bit. Um, and as we've gone, after 80 steps, it stopped. So what we have now is something where we just changed that state 80 times in a row and then stopped. That's the key idea in a loop. Now this code, I should say, is extremely inefficient um, in the sense that I could do this with far fewer, uh, far fewer words, far less code than this. But I wanted to give it to you in this really uh, verbose form so that you get a sense of what the underlying logic for a loop is. And it's basically this. So I'll reiterate it again and then I'll stop. You say, you go, okay, you've got some criterion and you say, while that criterion is met, in this case, don't stop painting, we keep doing the stuff. And here we've got code that does stuff. Ah, there we go, code that does stuff. And then at the end, we've got this thing here that says, okay, let's update that criterion. And if the criterion is met, then we stop. And what will happen is that because we've updated this value of stop painting, um, it will go down there and it will um, uh, go back up to the top. And when it gets here, it stops again. To give you, just again, to give you some hint of exactly how this works. Let's give you, um, let's make it um, print something out every single time. So if I just go um, print, so if I am a little bit clearer, let's take this and go cut that to, uh, and call it current uh, step. All right, and we'll go current step gets is that. So the current step is just the last value of the step ID. And then I'm going to get it to print to the screen the value of current step. Okay, so you save. I'll give you a second and think, what is this code going to do? Mentally run it in your head. What do you think this is what's going to happen? And now we run it and it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to 80. At each time point, it's been modifying that state tibble um, and it's made an, a sequence of 80 of these changes and then it stopped. 
So the key thing to take away from this, and I will stop blabbering now, is that you've encountered the while loop, and in the process I've accidentally shown you the if statement. So loops allow you to go around and around and around and around, and if statements uh, let you say, do this thing, but only if this thing is true. That's the, the key idea, and they're supposed to correspond to the natural English meaning of the words, do something while blah, and do something if blah, is kind of the logic for those two uh, programming constructs. And now I'll stop, um, and uh, I'll be back next time, and we'll get a little bit closer to drawing that pretty picture. Okay. Ah, apparently I'm not going. Sorry. Uh, there we go.